Hi guys and welcome to this video on medical school personal statements. Now we're going to be looking at an example medical school personal statement that was successful in gaining admission into medical school. And what I'm also going to do is link in the description below a free medical school personal statement guide to help you guys get started on writing your medical school personal statement and making it stand out from the crowd so that you can get admission into medical school. So make sure to check that out. Let's get started. So being a doctor is also being a humanitarian. Medicine combines scientific knowledge and unprejudiced human concern, providing a unique yet essential service, which makes a direct, tangible contribution to people's quality of life. So right away at the start, we've got this sentence here, which acts as our hook. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a hook? Well, a hook is simply something which draws the reader in. Now we'll remember that medical school admissions teams are reading hundreds if not thousands of personal statements and the person reading your personal statement needs something memorable to bring them in to, so that they can remember the personal statement and make it stand out from the crowd. So they've mentioned here exactly what they think being a, being a doctor involves which is being a humanitarian. And medicine combines the scientific knowledge, so that's what they believe that medicine is, with unprejudiced human concern, providing a unique yet essential service which makes a direct, tangible contribution to people's quality of life. Okay, so they've given a good summary of what they think being a doctor involves. So let's read on. Determined to be a doctor, I arranged two weeks work experience in the orthopaedic department of my local hospital. This gave me great insight into the pressures of a doctor's life during theatre sessions, clinics and ward rounds. To me, it highlighted the care and compassion required in medicine and enhanced my empathy, particularly for the vulnerable. I also came to appreciate the immense trust patients hold in their doctors. In a week's placement at a GP practice, I realised the importance of strong rapport between patient and doctor emphasizing the more personal side of medicine. I witnessed the teamwork and cooperation required within a management meeting when difficult cases were discussed to find the best possible solution. In addition, I have attended university lectures on medical related topics and read the student BMJ to keep updated with the ever changing face of medicine. Okay, so quite a lot there. So let's break this down in a bit more detail. Straight after, we've introduced exactly what we think being a doctor involves. The writer of this personal statement has st went straight into the work experience, which is quite a nice transition as it gives the admissions tutor a flavour of exactly what they've done straight away. What have they mentioned specifically? Well, they have mentioned that they've done two weeks work experience. And it's quite nice to mention the duration as well, the orthopaedic department of their, of their local hospital. And as well as this, they've mentioned a few things that they've learned. So they've learned about the pressures of a doctor's life. And they've also learned about the care and compassion required within medicine. And they've said that it enhanced their empathy. So these are some key points that are important to mention. You don't just want to mention the work experience that you've done in itself. You also want to expand on that and highlight some of the key things that you've seen that taught you something and exactly what they taught you. And here they've mentioned that they have enhanced their empathy. So we'll see highlighted the qualities that they have gained from this specifically the qualities related to being a doctor. Okay, so that's the first batch of work experience that they've done. But they've also got some more work experience, which is good. So if you can get some more work experience, that's always good because it gives you more opportunities to show exactly what you've learned. So let's say work experience two just so we can differentiate from the first batch. And let's 
see exactly what they've written. So in a week's placement, this time at a GP practice, realize the importance of strong rapport between patient and doctor, emphasizing the more personal side of medicine. Witness the teamwork and cooperation required within a management meeting to find the best possible solution. And what else have they done? Well, they've attended university lectures on medical related topics and they read the student PMJ to keep updated. Okay, so they've highlighted learning, the key learning points, the key learning points of what they learned from their work experience and they've given some tangible examples of that. And later on, they've also mentioned a few extracurricular things which they do because of their interest in medicine. So let's say extra medical related experience. And this is always good to have because as well as work experience, you want to show that you're actually doing something outside of this time to for your own interest and to show the admissions tutors that you're committed to medicine as a profession. So let's look at the next paragraph. My attainment throughout school is evident through my numerous awards for endeavour and for obtaining the highest marks in maths, geography and media studies, as well as achieving the ducks. Home studying for GCSE Urdu depicts my self-motivation and drive to succeed. Presenting my project is aids incurable to classmates, teachers and industry experts and the independent learning-based science baccalaureate displays my ability to construct a high quality report within set deadlines. Okay, so here what the writer has done is that they've went on to their academic achievements, so academics. And this is quite an, a natural structure for the personal statement. You start with the hook and what you think being a doctor involves, you move on to your work experience and then you go on to your academics highlighting why you have the academic ability to undertake a degree in medicine and go on to become a doctor. Because being a undertaking a degree in medicine requires a lot of hard work and it requires a lot of studying late night in the library, maybe compared to your peers at the same level. So you want to show that you have the ability to do that. So some practical examples of what they've shown here include They've got numerous awards. They've got numerous awards and they've highlighted some of the subjects specifically and that they've achieved the Ducks Award in their school. And they've also home studied for GCSU Urdu, which they've said highlights their motivation and drive to succeed. So they've actually shown some learning points from that. And they've also mentioned the project is AIDS Incurable for the Science Baccalaureate. And again, they've mentioned what this shows so that they can stick to set deadlines. So a good combination of some practical examples of how they have the academic ability to succeed in medicine, as well as what they've learned from some of the things that they've done. Let's go on and continue. Volunteering at Oxfam and Cancer Research for 18 months demonstrates my organisation to balance my numerous personal and social responsibilities. So they've just got some further experience within, you could say, a care-related sect. So on to the next paragraph. Undertaking the Silver Duke of Edinburgh has given me an opportunity to develop my leadership skills and aptitude for teamwork whilst appreciating the need to be decisive. Being an avid member of the debating club and having participated in inter-school speaking competitions has enhanced my interpersonal and communication skills. These were further developed by overcoming complex barriers when peer tutoring children with special needs, PE lessons and peer mentoring a first year pupil who was struggling to adjust for the demands of secondary school. I have also been a year representative and a prefect positions requiring teamwork to engage and support fellow classmates. Okay, so some extra things that they've done that you could say are related to some of the qualities that are required within medicine. So we could say 
extracurricular extracurricular related to medicine or related to skills slash qualities that are required. So showing that they are a well-rounded individual essentially. So let's take a look at some of the things that they have done. They've done the Silver Duke of Edinburgh Award, which they've said has given the, them the ability to demonstrate leadership and teamwork skills. Okay, and the need to be decisive, which is required within medicine because of the high pressure environment at times. What have they also done well? They've been part of the debating club and participated in inter-school speaking competitions, which they've said has enhanced their interpersonal and communication skills. So all relevant skills and qualities to medicine. This is what you want to highlight to the admissions tutor. And they've also peer tutored children with special needs and done some peer mentoring. And they've been a year representative and a prefect, which they've mentioned requires teamwork again and supporting fellow classmates. Now, this is all good, but one thing that, one critique that I would have is that they could have, in my opinion, narrowed this down slightly and been slightly more specific by giving some examples. So they mentioned some things that they've done, which is good, and they've mentioned some skills that they've learned. But it's always good to give some practical examples of exactly, for example, a situation that you came across in which you learned and displayed that skill or specifically a situation in that role that you were in that has taught you something. So moving on to the next paragraph, I have furthered my ambition to pursue a career in medicine during my gap year. So th this person's actually undertaken a gap year as well. And we'll talk about this as well. Being a simulated patient at Glasgow University for first year medical students has given me vital experience in the role a doctor plays during a consultation. During a two-month work placement at York Hill Hospital, I was able to demonstrate what I had learned to doctors in the form of a project. Working with children with special needs at Cosgrove Care has shown me it is crucial to adapt to each child's specific needs and personalities to encourage independence. My job at a care home has highlighted the clinical progression and variation in severity of diseases such as Alzheimer's therefore emphasizing the need for healthcare solutions to be structured around the individual. I also intend to travel to China next summer to participate in a medical program. Okay, so all of this paragraph is related to their gap year. So let's talk about gap years briefly. Now, naturally a gap year is going to happen when you don't get into medicine for the first time. And actually this is more common than you think. Even if you don't get into medicine, the first year that you apply, naturally you're going to be a little bit upset if medicine was what you want to do, but actually it's an opportunity and you should see it as an opportunity to develop yourself, to increase the experience that you get related to medicine and to also enhance the skills and qualities that are all related to medicine and generally have some time to do some other things which you enjoy as well. So what have they specifically done here? So let's, let's take a look at this. So they've been a simulated patient at a medical school which has given them experience in the role a doctor plays so this is quite a unique situation and quite a good experience to actually have because it they've been interacting with people who are actually studying medicine and they've done it from the other side so they've actually got some experience of what's required and what's actually some good attributes within a consultation to have as a doctor They've also done a two-month work placement, so they've got some further experience in a hospital setting, and two months this time, which is a bit longer. And they said that they've done some sort of a project. Now, it would be good to know what this project, project is about because, again, you want to give some practical examples and not just mention generic things because it makes your personal statement stand out and also adds to some of the skills and qualities which you might have learn from that. They've also worked with children with special needs 
uh, charity and they've mentioned some things which they've learned from that they've also worked at a care home and they've mentioned some of the things that they've learned from this and for healthcare solutions to be structured around the individual and they said that they want to travel to China for a medical program. Now overall we can see that this person has gained a lot of experience in their gap year and that's going to be clear to the person who's looking at his personal statement. Now again one thing you want to do is just summarize the points that you mention as much as possible because your word count remember is very limited and you want to get as much in there as possible whilst showing the tangible experience and practical skills and qualities that you've learned from those experiences. So on to the next paragraph. Outside academia I enjoy a wide spectrum of competitive sports. Being a member of the school's rugby, football and hockey teams and having obtained a black belt in karate. So we're straight on again to extracurricular stuff and this when I say extracurricular is things which are not related to medicine. And why is this required? Well the admissions tutors we want to see that you are able to have other hobbies and experiences outside of your work life that allows you to relax because you're not a machine at the end of the day and you want to be able to show that you have a balanced life and you have the ability to cope with the stresses of undertaking a degree in medicine. So they've mentioned a few things here which we'll highlight. They've mentioned some competitive sports and specifically things like karate and be part of different teams within the school. And in the next sentence, they've also mentioned athletics. So some examples of what they do specifically and maybe what level that has been at, which is always good. So looking at the rest of the paragraph, winning medals at county level for athletics highlights my ability to perform at the highest standard. I have won poetry competitions and my writing has been published in books and magazines. I also enjoy painting and drawing to stimulate my creative side. My artwork has been displayed at exhibitions. And then they've got, an, this is a separate paragraph at the end which summarises everything. So I wish to be part of the innovative face of medicine and consider my intellectual ability and determination in conjunction with my emotional and social qualities ideal to succeed in this profession. Again, at the start, we've just got some further extracurricular stuff that they've mentioned. So specifically things like poetry, writing, painting and drawing and they've shown that it's been their paintings been displayed at exhibitions and that their work has been published in books and magazines. So some tangible achievements that they've shown throughout this extracurricular paragraph, which is always nice. And then this paragraph here, which is a, essentially a summary, they've highlighted or summarized exactly what the personal statement's been about and what they've shown from that, which is quite nice. And it's just one sentence and that's all you need, depending on how much word count you have. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content and we'll see you next time.